How many of you decided not to do something because it was hard? Raise your hands, please. Like there's no excuse whatsoever for not getting at what it is that you should be doing. We are just so interested in blaming everybody else and excuses because we don't want to take on responsibility. So whenever something hurts you, there are two options. You can either become wounded or you can become wise. This is the choice. When Einstein said those who've never failed have never tried. The reason most people don't take action is simple. It's fear. Fear of failure, fear of success. Perfection equals paralysis. In my experience, things hardly ever go perfectly. Even if you want them to, the stuff goes wrong. That's just life. When everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. And once you learn by falling on your face, that's how you learn. You learn by trying to create a light bulb over and over and over again. If at first you fail, then try, try again. When a child's learning how to walk and falls down 50 times, it never stops and thinks to itself, this isn't for me. We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. It only took one mistake to turn your whole life inside out. It only takes one good test to see what you were doing wrong. Because failure is just testing. It's bloody hard to be a high performance person. Problems are always an indicator that you're making progress. Some of you in here are comfortable, and you think just because you're comfortable, you're being successful. I don't ever feel like I lose because I won't give up. Even if I lose, I'll do it. The leverage is in being accountable of everything. The leverage is exposing your weaknesses. We either win or we learn. You never look at that as a failure or a loss. You look at it as an opportunity to learn. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. And so what can I learn from this? Now you're leveraging this problem to grow. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. Whether you're you know, 9, 12, 16, 21, 22, 24, if you fail, it doesn't matter. The failures were irrelevant. There's not one of you that weren't destined to become successful. You have dreams and you have goals. And I promise you, nobody can stop you. I don't think confidence is something that you are born with. It's a skill set and I had no confidence. So confidence is something I taught myself over the years. I started becoming okay with who I am. I became the best version of me. And then I sort of said, I'm okay, you know, I'm all right. Even if someone else thinks this, I'm okay. And everyone can do that. People just don't realize it. So it made me understand that confidence truly is the key to getting ahead in life. If you believe in yourself, the world will believe in you. Because perception is reality. As soon as I started doing everything that I loved, there was a surge of power, a surge of confidence. I wasn't insecure anymore because the emotion that had the most dominance in my thought process was actually being paid attention to. I, I'm really sick of being insecure. I believe I'm enough and I believe that everything I have that I need for life to make all my dreams come true, I know it's already inside of me. It's who you are and being comfortable with who you are that influences other people to say, oh, okay, maybe I could do that. You can't wait for Destiny. No one can be that. You can't be like, oh, Destiny's gonna knock on my door one day. No, it won't. You have to be able to recognize opportunities. Um, because there'll be a lot of them that come into your life and once you recognize an opportunity you have to seize the day and work bloody hard because there'll be 25 other people who'll want to do it. If failure was not on the table, do you realize that 87% of people allow the fear of failure 
to outweigh their desire to succeed. Failure is required. Success is optional. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed. I went all in. I made my move before I was ready. I took a risk. It didn't pay off the way I wanted it to, but I learned. You don't lose if you learn. Failure is destined to happen. At some point, you will fail. Why? Because you're not good at everything. You can learn as much, if not more, from your failures, your non-starts, your hesitations, as you can from your successes. You've got a lot going for you, a lot more than you think. But you're framing your life as a failure, and in framing your life as a failure, you will continue to see only failure in your life. It's up to you how you bounce back from those failures. I've seen a lot of incredible people stopped by an unwillingness to let go of a past that doesn't help them. No retreat. No surrender. You know, they say life is 90% of what happens and the other 10% is how you respond to it. It's possible. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I say it's time for you to turn your life around. I say it's time for you to get back up because life just knocked you down. I say it's time for you to swim because you're about to drown. Congratulations, you've survived 100% of the worst moments in your life. If in that moment, regardless of your worldly success, you feel good about who you are, you feel good about what you've done and how you've touched other people's lives, you feel good about what you're striving for and trying to accomplish, you feel good that in the times when it got hard, if it mattered to you, you pushed through. That matters. So in other words, your chance of being successful is determined by how well you can bounce back from those failures. He was homeless for three weeks, living in a New Jersey bus station. He also was so broke at one point that when he was writing the film Rocky, his electricity was turned off and he was forced to sell his dog for 25 bucks just to get the lights turned back on. Then, later on, he was rejected by talent scouts over 1,500 times. Probably most famous for his work in Rocky, Sylvester Stallone. She was once told that she didn't have the face for television. Your only shot to make it in this TV industry was to be behind the camera, not in front of it. Forbes mentioned that in 2004, she gave away 276 cars to members of her audience. She ultimately paved the way for many of our other beloved talk show hosts. Now, she has her own network. a name that brings smiles to people all over the world. He created theme parks with the reputation of being the happiest place on earth. His parks are created with creativity and imagination from the very second you enter into their gates. Long before he became known as the inventor of this magical place, he was fired from the newspaper that he once worked at. They fired him because his boss said he lacked imagination. Walt Disney, an American filmmaker, he is considered one of the founding pioneers of the New Hollywood era and one of the most popular directors and producers in film history. He directed Jurassic Park. It made almost $939 million. But what you might not know is that he got rejected from film school three times. 
The film school that rejected him later offered him an honorary degree and hired him to become trustee of the school. Steven Spielberg. He's an actor, a comedian, impressionist, screenwriter, musician, producer, and even a painter. But growing up was a different story. He was extremely poor. Even at the age of 15, he worked as a janitor to help his family pay the bills. And during his first performance at a comedy club, he was booed off stage. Now you can't go anywhere in the world without someone knowing who exactly who Jim Carrey is. Failure's not a bad thing. It's a stepping stone to your next level of greatness. Failure promotes your opportunity for success. It is a prerequisite for success. How bad do you want to succeed? The better question is, how much are you willing to fail? Never let yourself be the victim. If I could go back in time and have a conversation with my eight to 10 year old self, that would be the message I would give. Because when you think about it, you're a kid, things don't go your way, what do you do? You cry, you whine, you throw a fit, you want your parents to feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for yourself. It's how, how you deal with things at that age. And then you grow up, but you don't necessarily shed that habit, that mentality. And it becomes obvious, right? I mean, you, you can talk to someone for 30 seconds and you know right away if they have that victim mentality, the world's falling down, they're tired, they have so much to do, they're so busy, X, Y, and Z. Look, having that mindset does two things for you. One, it makes you come across helpless and weak, and no one wants to come across that way. Two, it does not get you to where you're going. It does not change the situation. Right? Here's the reality. There is always a way to get what you want. There is always a way to position yourself to move away from what you don't want. You can quite literally become what you want to become, but you cannot look at life like it's this problem, like it's against you. The ball is in your court. You know, it wasn't that long ago, two, three years ago, that I was not the happiest guy in the world, right? Did not like what I was doing, did not like how I was spending my time, was not energized, was not passionate about very much. But the time came where I didn't want to live like that. I had a conversation with myself. I stopped being the victim, I stopped complaining, and I asked myself, dude, what do you want? What is your purpose? What is your goal? Who do you want to become? And I literally made the decision and walked away a different person. And the things around me changed, my life changed, because I made a decision to never be the victim again, to get what I want. I became the author of my own story. And you realize just how simple it is to transform your situation. Not easy, right? And it takes time. But there's always a way to get from point A to point B. And this separates the world into two kinds of people. People who look at how things are, who accept reality as truth, who complain, and people who look at what can be, who make the most of any situation, look at life as if it's clay, to be molded, to be shaped. It seems funny to me, knowing what I do now, that I went through any of my life like a hamster on a wheel. That I talked to people every day who didn't energize me, that I didn't want to be around, that I did things I wasn't passionate about. That is insanity. Because if you don't like something, but you do nothing to change it, what's left for you to do? Complain. Wine, stay where you are, that's it. See, one of the reasons I reference athletics so much is because they bring this mentality on you.
that when things become difficult, when things become challenging, your job, your one job is to find a way to figure it out. And I always did. And I took that and I brought it to everything else I do. And now it's eye-opening to see people achieving success, financial freedom, these things everyone wants, and know that the difference between them and everyone else is that they felt like they deserved it. A lot of the time they weren't smarter, stronger, they weren't more gifted starting out, but they moved toward what they wanted. They didn't cry or groan about the problems, they didn't look for sympathy. Those at the top of the mountain are not victims. They would never let themselves be victims. It's about the other side, the opportunity. Getting from where you are to what you want. Because the first step is belief, right? People think that belief comes once you've done it. You won't even take the first step if you don't believe that you can accomplish it. So we lead with belief as a species. So you have to find a way to believe in it to move. So your mom is giving you an awesome challenge. Can you believe in the face of her doubt, right? And to me, when people doubt me, it's a gift. I love that because I believe in beauty and rage. And you need both. I need people to love me. I need to want beautiful things for myself and for others. I want to create something amazing. I want to help a lot of people. I also want to prove a lot of people wrong who don't think that I can do this. I want to crush the enemies that want to see me fail, that want to do anything they can to ensure that I fail. I spend 80% of my time here and I spend 20% of my time here. And the irony is, as Darth Vader will tell you, there's power in the dark side. And once you learn to balance those, then you really get something interesting. And here's another way to say it. You have to know when to love yourself and know when to hate yourself. I think it's 80-20 again. You want to spend 80% of the time loving you and being proud of who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what part of your journey you're in, really loving that you're showing up, that you're playing, maybe you're not yet satisfied with the level that you're playing, but no worries, like you're there, you're doing it, you're showing up. And then 20% of the time being wildly disappointed by yourself, being horrified by the fact that you were so lazy and so afraid of being cold that you wouldn't get out of bed. Like that's terrifying and that that's not acceptable. That's not a person that you're prepared to continue to be and that you find that so disgusting in yourself that you're gonna make an immediate change. And if you don't do that, you'll never grow. You'll spend all your time over here, you'll be pacified. Talk about being pacified by the dream. Merely having the dream. I wanna do good things for people. Have you heard a lot of people say that? Yeah. Yeah, people say that all day. I wanna do great things, but I wanna help the world. In what way? Like they don't get specific, so they're pacified by the dream. So you've got this person who's really not living up to their potential, being pacified by the vision of what they could do and who they could become, but they never, to your earlier point, they never find the path to execution. So I find without kicking myself in the ass, without being deeply dissatisfied with myself, 20% of the time, because if it's more than 20% of the time, you begin to erode yourself and it gets very corrosive. You'll chip away at your own self-esteem and that's a total waste. But you do have to be willing to kick your ass. See, I recognize early on in life that life ain't just about the decisions that we make. You know what I'm saying? If you don't become who you're supposed to become, people gonna die. That's deep. Like, think about it. If you don't become who you're supposed to come, like people gonna hurt. Like if I didn't hit the reset button in life, who knows where Brian would be right now? Who knows where the team would be? Like there is something inside you. And so this is why we do what we do. Because I don't know, like all y'all probably feel in the presentation, but how many of y'all are really gonna apply what we gave you? It could be 10%, it could be 40%, I don't know. But what took place today could shift your life forever because you got a brain. So when you find yourself down and out, you go think about, man, if Jill was in her car, homeless and pregnant, and she got through it, that girl done sang in Africa and been to Ecuador and all over the globe. If she could do it, you know now you could do it. If some of y'all, you got some homeboys you connected with, but you know they ain't really living how you supposed to be living and they leading you down the wrong way, you know from Brian's story, yo, if I remove myself from it, if I plug in with positive people, I can make it. 
Listen, I want for you what we experiencing. One of my homeboys was like, Jay, you gotta take it easy. You want everybody to experience a great life like you. I'm like, bro, why not? I'm trying to win. I want you to win. I done went through too much pain. When Tony was sharing what she was sharing, Jill, both of them got dealt with people taking advantage of them when they was little. Listen to me, man. I know you suffering. I know you hurting on the inside. You wondering why. Like, why this gotta happen to me? Why I got experiences? Why this person had to take advantage of me? I promise you, you are turning into a warrior. Because the stuff that you going through, the stuff that you have to experience, what don't kill you makes you stronger. If you look at the cat that goes to the gym and he lifting weights and he pumping iron, if you ask homeboy, hey bro, how you get so big, they gonna tell you, it took a whole lot of time and I had to go through a whole lot of pain. And life is gonna grow you. Listen to me right now, life gonna grow you. It is not gonna be easy, it is going to be painful, it is going to be frustrating, you gonna shed some tears, you probably gonna spill some blood, it's gonna hurt, but you gotta keep pushing. You know when there's nothing left to do but to fight? With everything you've got to get back up. There's a word for it. Resilience. And that word comes down to such a simple test. Not much involved, but in the moments that matter most, it's everything. You and a mirror looking into your own eyes and realizing there's nowhere else to go but up and being ready for what that takes. It's a single decision. The same decision you'll need to make every day. Get up. It's what gets someone to write letter after letter after letter, looking for a job because they know all they need is a start. It's what causes someone to keep moving straight forward even when the start of their journey should have knocked them off track. Resilience and grit, these aren't pretty words. They mean something much more to those who know them well. These words have scars. They symbolize the battle. But they are also the gateway to something so special. It's what it means to lose eight elections, be in bed for six months after a nervous breakdown, then to get up and do what it takes to enter the books of history. It's the power behind getting rejected 12 times before smashing almost every record and every ceiling imaginable. Resilience. That's the word left when the storms keep coming. When things go from bad to worse, every reason to stop trying. The moment we all get humbled by at some point. Sometimes more than once. There are times for dreams. And sometimes there is only time for the reality of now picking up one foot, then the other, starting to move forward step by step, tears and frustration, another step, hurt and sadness, another step, shaking off what was, you just keep going. It's the light that finally breaks after the darkest of nights. In the moment that matters, you and Amir, same decision every day, knowing it's gonna be long, knowing there is no other way. That is resilience. The rigors of academic life can be brutal. Long days of classes. Long nights of studying. And low cash flow requires you to be frugal. Projects, case studies, pop quizzes, and final exams will test your morals and your scruples. But you keep pushing and pushing because you know one day, all of that hard work and studying will pay off and be fruitful. You've seen many others succumb to academic demise and wind up with the wrong letter on their transcript. The dreaded W, which painfully stands for withdrawal. But that's where you draw the line because you made a vow to choose incline over decline. Fast forward over rewind, redesign over recline, and hard grind 
over pouting wine. You made the choice to dig deep within. And thus the only W you will ever get will be the W that stands for win. Because winners like you pick themselves up when they stumble and slip. Winners like you understand that it's impossible to never trip. Winners like you are strong enough to say no when their friends want them to take a sip. Winners like you trust the process so steps they never ever try and skip. And that chip on your shoulder, it remains to remind you of all the doubters, naysayers and haters that said you would never walk across that stage and receive that paper. But more fuel for your fire just makes success so much greater. Because you're overcoming the sour taste of now to get to the sweet taste of later. You adjust to all the different personalities of your teachers and professors and enjoy those that are super cool, but stay mentally prepared for those that are stressors. Blessings seem to find you because the universe conspires to make sure everything falls into place because you've got so much heart, passion, and desire. Your fire keeps burning, but at times it starts to fizzle. But you remember you owe it to your future self, and that gas turns that fizzle into a sizzle. You want to leave a legacy and contribute to the greater good. So for now, it's the uncomfortable, disciplined, and sacrifice. Because the cash out in the future means today you gotta pay the price. So that means when your friends ask, can you go? Your heart wants to say yes, but your willpower says no. Because Mr. Jones Thermochemistry 3202 ain't no joke. And so you gotta be locked in and stay woke. Because he's all about business and doesn't give any rope. So if you miss any assignments or fail any test, you have very little hope of passing his class. But you will pass his class and you will pass it with flying colors because you, my friend, are an academic hustler. And thus you put in the time, the effort, and ask all the right questions to make sure all of your bases are covered. The vultures will hate. You tried to give them vision, but they never put on the right frames. And thus their sight was blurry and their gray reflected it. And now they want to throw shade at you, but your shield deflected it. You tell them winning in progress over here. So please eliminate the negative vibe. It's time to remove them from your circle and find yourself a positive tribe. Because misery loves company. But that misery cannot have any of your companionship. Because everybody on your team is working as a unit to come back and win the championship. You owe it to your future self to make money moves in and out of the classroom because time waits for no one. And whether you succeed or fail, it will pass soon. So respect your personal brand and make sure your daily advertisement represents who you want to be. Walk with character and integrity so your reflection in the mirror is who you want to see. Your future self is counting on your current self to set the tone and make sure your future is not only bright but powerful and strong for mediocrity. Your future self is counting on your current self to never take shortcuts and never lack integrity because the day will come for you to walk with character and have clarity. Greatness is your destiny but at times you must reboot your mental computer because every step you take today will directly affect your future. Your future self is counting on your current self to give every ounce of your being, every ounce of your soul, to make sure you tap into your gift. This is a great day to win.